Stevens right there is perfect. Guys, hey. Not in there, elbow, yep. Yep. This is the ball here right there is perfect. Yep. It's, it's very, it's that, it's very, that's fine. Oh, it's going to be okay. I'll turn it up on my phone. Mr. the ball here. If you guys can stand, the line stand there. Right? So make sure people move down. Gentlemen, move down or to that side. Make her not over there. Keep going to the other side. We're not sitting in those spots. Yep, keep moving. Gentlemen, under Mr. Stevens, we're not going to sit those seats. Mr. Stevens, we're going to move over. Yep. Yep. Move down. Yep, down lower. One more row, Mr. Pumpkin. We're going to keep that one free. Yep. Guys, not there. Oh, sorry. We have a whole row down there. Will, down a little bit lower, Will. There's a couple of seats in the end right there, Will. This lines, if I can get you to come on this side over here. Yeah. This lap, if I can get you up there. This west, right over here. This west, if I can get you uh, one of those areas. Why are we good there? Are we live? Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention. All right, this is the very first time that we as a school have had a live broadcast here and stream it within the school. So I wanted the seniors in here, the class of 2023, as you set the tone uh, for this presentation. So a couple of things before I turn this over. Number one, I had a chance to meet Mr. Jones years ago at a presentation down at Metco Inc. And it was an outstanding presentation. And I always thought, would love to have him here at our school. I think his message is one you'll connect with. And it was one that connected with me. Uh, we're very fortunate that we have an outstanding Metco director, Ms. Kasia Johnson, who then, yep, give her a round of applause. She's the one who actually made this happen. She's the one that has set this up. So Mr. Jones spoke at the middle school earlier, and he's here today. They're a magic block. So a couple things before I turn it over. Number one, he's a, our guest. We're going to treat him with a lot of respect. Number two, as a guest, we're going to take our phones now. Let's turn off our phones, put them away. Let's give our attention to Mr. Jones because he's our guest. We're going to treat him with a lot of respect. I already bragged about how wonderful and awesome you are. I'm looking forward to this. As we know, yesterday was Martin Luther King Day, so this times up very well with the message of community. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to, I consider, good friend, yes. Mr. Jones, and he gave me a good bear hug. So thank you, Mr. Jones. Welcome, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beast of a man. He's as wide as he is tall. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it is so nice to be amongst you all. Um, it is It is just good. I Seriously, I, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Good afternoon, right? Good afternoon? Good afternoon. This is a back and forth thing. This is just me going to like vomit words at you. 
And sometimes when they get, I want to know you're still breathing and living and thinking and taking it in. It means something to you. So, all that said, um, I am here to do a few things with you this afternoon. Among those things, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Sorry. Get, get used to it. Life, that's, that's part of life's job. If you're comfortable in your life, either you're comfortable being dead or you ain't trying very hard. And either way, that's not the way we we're meant to be here. I'm here to inspire you, hopefully, a little bit. I'm here to activate you, hopefully, a little bit. I'm here to let you know a really, really simple thing, but it's really important. And that is I love you. 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 You. Oh, this guy. A lot of love for this guy. No, I love every single one of you, and I mean that from my heart. I do. I honest to God do. And I will tell you why. Number one, you are the embodiment of my country. You are my citizenry made flesh. Every one of you, even if you are not a native of this country or a citizen of this country right now, because you are in my country, you define the citizenry. And I love you because that is who we're, we're supposed to be as a country. We will not succeed as a society if we can't find a way to care for one another. It doesn't matter that I don't know you. Everybody starts at the top. Then you give me reasons to start knocking you down, pegs. But I start from loving I also love you because of my faith. I, I'm a person of faith. And the last time I checked, the, the, the Most High said, love them. Love them, doggone it. I was like, okay, man, okay, I'm doing do, it, do, I'm trying. I, I don't do it right all the time, but I'm, I know that that's important. So I love you. Thirdly, you are a reflection of humanity. Every one of you. So you can teach me things that I don't know from myself that are going to only elevate my own humanity or challenge me to be better to the other humans that are in this, this experience with. Why would I not love somebody who's capable of being that for me? Why wouldn't I? And most important of all, I love you because of the man that we're going to talk about for the next hour or so. In a program I like to call MLK and the Strength and Shared Dreams. I love you because Martin Luther King tried to show us all what love on a national scale defined by the very essence of what this country was founded on should look like. And I'm going to talk about with you that today because I think it's really important for us to understand that because I think a couple of things about King really, really are frustrating to me. First and foremost is the way we look at Martin Luther King. Raise your hand if in the last week you've heard somebody spouting off part of the I Have a Dream stuff. You know, the, the speech, I have a dream, you know, little black boys and little black girls having tea together and hanging out and hugging and being nice to each other. That is the King that we mostly focus on. And there's nothing wrong with that MLK. That's an amazing MLK. But that MLK was defining of the first two thirds of his public life. The last third of his public life was the king that made people really uncomfortable. Understand that there were certain people who were already uncomfortable because he was dealing with things that we as a society had not dealt with well. Not that they were really hard, it's just that we just didn't want to deal and so it got bad until it boiled over and we had to deal with it. The idea here is that this country is a set of aspirational ideas, values, and perspectives. And unless we embrace them, we will fail. MLK to me is the definition of the single greatest non-elected American in the history of this country. Period. Period. And it was because of what he aspired to do. He gave his life to do something that we can all do and we don't have to die for it. And so because of that, I have to love you. Or no, I, I take that back. I choose to love you. I choose to love you. And that's important to me. So, but before we go any further, um, I wanna, I wanna uh, show a little video that will give you a little perspective 
on what it means to live in challenging times. So bear with me for a moment. Step up to the side here. You guys can see me. Congress passes the most sweeping civil rights bill ever to be written into the law and thus reaffirms the conception of equality for all men that began with Lincoln and the Civil War 100 years ago. The Negro won his freedom then. He wins his dignity now. Thank you. 